In the late 12th century BC, a cataclysmic series of social, political and economic upheavals ushered in a decades-long disaster known today as the Late Bronze Age Collapse. In the space of a single generation, nearly all of the most powerful empires of the Bronze Age imploded en masse into a maelstrom of violence and chaos as they were torn apart from inside and out. In Asia Minor, the ancient Hittite Empire, masters of their part of the world for close to a thousand years, collapsed into the hands of regional warring strongmen in the space of a single generation. In the similarly ancient and powerful city-states of the Levantine coastline, half-written SOS messages, still left in the kilns that they were hastily fired in, remain as a grim monument to the sheer speed and ferocity of this collapse. On the plains of Mesopotamia, kingdoms and cities as ancient as agriculture itself died under the swords and spears of foreign invaders. Marauding hordes of newcomers either displaced by famine, drought, warfare or societal upheaval in their original homelands. In the south, the ancient kingdom of Egypt survived the collapse to linger on as an isolationist shadow of its former self. Cut off from the once lucrative economic links that its now defunct former trade partners. In mainland Greece, however, once the centre of a powerful militaristic state based at the imposing hilltop citadel of Mycenae, society collapsed to such an extent that writing was forgotten for hundreds of years. The first and greatest dark age had begun, when civilised literate states again began to emerge in Greece and the coasts of Asia Minor hundreds of years later, they would look back on the time before the dark age as a mythical time of old, an age of heroes. Though the literate tradition of the Mycenaeans, probably learned from their trading partners to the east, died out after the collapse, an older and more ancient medium of conferring knowledge survived. Storytelling. Very few individuals throughout history have been able to fully master the old art of memorising entire sagas and stories to be passed down from generation to generation. The skaldic poets of Norse sagas, Turkish bards who spin tales of the High Middle Ages, and Gaelic yarn spinners of old are a few. Yet sadly, with the advent of writing and computers, they are almost extinct today. Yet people do remain, nonetheless, who know the old ways of oral storytelling, mostly in the remote places of the world. For untold millennia, it was from these ancient storytelling traditions the sum total of human knowledge was once passed down from one generation to the next. It is also from this tradition that one of the foundational texts of the classical Greek world, and by extension the world we know today, was born in the lull between the Bronze Age and the classical world. This oral tradition of telling stories of myths and heroes of old remained an integral part of the culture of the Ionian Sea. It was from these illiterate communities that the half-remembered tales of old were probably honed by successive generations of storytellers, all of them memorising the great epics line for line, whilst very possibly improving them and changing them over time. At some point during that first great dark age, the most famous tale of all was told the tale of the Trojan War. Still considered to be two of the great masterpieces of world literature, Homer's Odyssey and Homer's Iliad. Yet almost certainly, these two great works were born not in the written word, but in the spoken tongue. Homer, the supposed writer of the Iliad and the Odyssey, if he existed, lived there on the shores of the Ionian Sea. The Iliad is set during the Trojan War, the ten-year-long siege of the city of Troy by a coalition of Greek states. 
said to have taken place hundreds of years before Homer's time, and preserved through the generations by bardic tradition. It focuses upon a quarrel between King Agamemnon of Mycenae and the warrior Achilles, lasting a few weeks during the last year of the war. The Odyssey, meanwhile, focuses on the journey home of Odysseus, king of Ithaca after the fall of Troy. This begs the question, was there a Mycenaean bardic poem about Troy prior to the collapse, and did it survive the Dark Age? A single genius named Homer was originally thought to have authored the work. He is said to have been born sometime between the 12th and 7th centuries BC, though in recent years, he is increasingly thought to have been not a single figure, but a series of oral storytellers who honed and adapted the tale over successive generations, whilst merging it with other stories from the Age of Heroes, so it eventually contained a whole plethora of other characters, such as the mighty Greek warrior Ajax, and the brave Trojan warrior prince Hector. For centuries, the tale of the Trojan War was thought to have been little more than fable and legend, that was until recent archaeological evidence not only discovered that the fable city of Troy did indeed exist exactly where Homer said it was, but also identified more than half of the 160 locations where King Agamemnon's armies were said to have been drawn from, all of them bearing the unmistakable hallmarks of Mycenaean Greek settlement. Many of these sites had lain abandoned under piles of earth since hundreds of years before Homer's day meaning they must have been preserved through the oral tradition. This isn't just coincidence, it remains highly likely that some basic parts of the story of the Trojan War were real, preserved by oral tradition and added to over hundreds of years by Greek poets on the shores of the Ionian Sea. <laughs>